Glory to Jesus Christ. joy to be here with you on this 100th anniversary feast day as you continue to acknowledge the blessings of God. When I was little, our neighbor's son was an alcoholic, lived at home, didn't really have much of a job, actually didn't have a job, and uh, He had been in World War II and had been hurt and got a little pension, I guess, from the... But uh, he would often run out of money and go and ask his mother for, for more money to go to the bar. And uh, I remember his mother saying, you know, the, the son came and said, come on, Mom, give me, give me a little couple dollars, I need to, I need a drink, you know, and she would look and shake her head, and she would say, Škoda, what a pity, she would, and he was basically saying, you know, have pity on me, do indeed pity me, and she was saying, you are my pity, well, sometimes We look at people and think of that. What a shame that they've allowed themselves to get in that position. That they would actually beg for pity. The lepers in today's gospel come to Jesus and say, Lord, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. Have pity on us. Pity me. Pity us. Look at us in our pitiful condition. Give us something out of your pity, out of your sympathy for us. And Jesus says, go and show yourselves to the priests. And I can only imagine what was going through their head initially. Because how many times they had gone to people and said, Pity us. Give us something, a piece of bread. Pity us. Give us something so that we can live for another day. And those people said, go away. Just the way Jesus says, go. They may even have said, you know, there's a uh, soup kitchen down the street. Go there. Go to the priests, Jesus told him, told them. They said, oh yeah, what a good, we used to say, I don't know if they do, it's a cop out. But Jesus said, go. Go to the priests. And as they start going away, all of a sudden, This horrible disease of leprosy is cured. And then what do they think? Wow, no longer do we need pity. Isn't this great? We are different. We are now somebody's. And only one out of the ten realizes that it was Jesus by sending them away, by asking them to do something, that the power of healing was theirs. How many people said, go away? Sometimes they gave them something before they said, go away. But most of the time they just told them to go away. And now here is one who does the same thing. So this one understood this healing differently than the other nine. The other nine had what I call uh, little Jack Horner syndrome. You know, he put his thumb in the pie, pulled it out, and 
found a plum on his thumb and said, what a good boy am I, you know? He said, yeah, it wasn't he who put the plum in the pie. But all of a sudden, somehow, he's the good boy. He's the good one. And that's what they started to realize or believe, that this blessing was somehow their doing. Or was their entitlement? Talking to a doctor recently, and he said, this nonsense about everybody being entitled to health care. Yes, there is an entitlement to health care if you take care of yourself. And then the health industry will come and take care of you. But but the, most people have this sense that they, they live life the way they want to, and then all of a sudden, you know, it's up to the doctors to make them well. He said, oftentimes it's too late. Might have been a little exaggerated. But many of these, these nine lepers felt that that was their entitlement their entitlement to get well. And so if God did that, it wasn't any special blessing. They were, they should be able to expect that. But the one realized that all good things come from God. He realized that Jesus was different than the others. The others stood their distance, kept their distance from these lepers, which all Jews would do, lest they would become lepers. He was different. He didn't pity them. He didn't consider them the pity, the shkoda, the, the, the waste of human life. Indeed, he entered into their very lives. And when God enters into life, there is life that grows, that is healed, that is more. And one would say, well, if he wants to enter into the life, why did he tell them to go away? Because the power of God, the power of healing has no earthly limitations. He wanted them to realize that it was God and he wanted them to connect with the priests, the church of the, moment of the day, the temple or at least the synagogue. His power was what healed. We often believe that we are worthy of pity. We look at ourselves and say, oh God, pity me. Give me, give me a little extra. We may even look at others and say, I don't have what they have. Pity me. Give me a little of that. We ask God to pity us. We ask others to pity us. Instead, what does God do? God becomes one of us. He enters into our very humanity something we're going to celebrate in a very special way in a few weeks. How God becomes one of us. He becomes one of us so that we may become one with him. That we may have that life. He becomes one of us as a very baby at the very moment of conception to teach us that 
in every age, in every aspect of our life, he is one of us. We don't have to wait until we're old enough to decide for him. He is one of us. In our fragility. Recently, a friend of mine and his wife kind of broke up and separated in their home. And they went to counselors and the counselor actually helped them to come back together by realizing that they weren't treating each other as fragile human beings. Each one thought that the other should be the strong one. They went to the other and said, pity me. I'm weak. I'm fragile. And they forgot how oh, God is the one who gives the strength. Indeed, God or Jesus did send the, the ten lepers away. He said, yes, you will be healed. I'll give you something you can't possibly imagine. It's not going to be a piece of bread or a dollar. It's going to be a full healing. It's going to be life. To live life like everyone else. To live life the way God had intended it to be lived. But you must do something too. You must be part of your healing. You need to do something. And what we do is nothing compared to what he does. And so that tenth leper, after he was healed, he said to himself, well, this is great. I've got to give something to God for what he has given me. But what could he give? He was a leper, for Pete's sake. He, had, he owned nothing but the clothes on his back. And so he said, I will give thanks. I will give thanks. A few weeks ago, we celebrated Thanksgiving. And how many times, regrettably, lately, we're changing that to from giving thanks to being thankful. Because giving thanks implies a gift to someone. Who do the atheists thank? They don't. They are just thankful. But indeed, it is acknowledging the gift of God. When a college student goes off and is at college, he or she may acknowledge, gee, this was really wonderful for my parents to work all those years and sacrifice and put money aside for me to go here. I'm going to thank them. And how would that college student thank them? Could go to Hallmark and buy a little card that says thank you. No. That college student studies, works hard to be worthy of that gift. St. Paul tells us what it takes to be worthy of the gift that we have been given. He says, yes, do good deeds. Avoid hurting one another. Build one another up. But remember that when you do that, it's not just 
to be good, to get people to pat you on the back and say, oh, what a good boy, what a good girl are you. It is to say thanks. It is the way that we say thanks to God by being the best person we can be. And that is in whatever situation we find ourselves. Being the best father, the best wife, the best husband, the best mother, the best child, the best student, the best deacon, the best priest, the best bishop, Not the best bishop in the world, perhaps, but the best bishop who I can be. God wants us to thank him by reflecting him, by showing others who God is. St. Nicholas, who we'll be celebrating in a few days, certainly did that. He was and is now the symbol of being good and generous. But so often, his reason for doing it is overlooked. Let's never forget why we do good. Let's never forget why we sacrifice for God why we sacrifice our time to come and make breads, or why we sacrifice an hour or so in the morning on Sunday. Why? Because he has loved us so much that he became a human being, that we may be with him forever. Like St. Nicholas, let us indeed thank God by being the best person we can be and by reflecting his person in ours. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to you forever.